Hello and welcome to the Autodesk Design Academy. In this third module, we will be talking about importing model parameters and a finite element analysis setup from a CAD analysis program, specifically Autodesk Inventor, into Autodesk Simulation Mechanical. We will discuss benefits of performing preliminary finite element analyses within a CAD application, benefits of importing constraints, loads, and contact types from a CAD model, how to apply loads and constraints defined in Autodesk Inventor for use in Autodesk Simulation Mechanical, and how to alter Inventor parameters within Simulation Mechanical, which is a convenient way of creating and analyzing variants of the initial geometry. A number of CAD applications now provide Integrated Finite Element Analysis, or FEA, capabilities. When designers take advantage of these tools, the design process becomes more streamlined and efficient. The FEA tools integrated within a CAD package typically lack the level of functionality and features of an advanced FEA package. For example, most packages employ tetrahedral elements only for solid meshes because solid meshing is easier with tetrahedra. More advanced FEA packages, such as Autodesk Simulation Mechanical, provide meshes comprised of predominantly six-sided, eight-node bricks, as well as wedges, pyramids, and tetrahedra. Tetrahedral elements tend to exaggerate the stiffness of a structure. Therefore, a finer mesh is required relative to a brick mesh to obtain similar results. Nonetheless, the CAD simulation tools enable the designer to perform preliminary stress and displacement calculations and to adjust the model geometry as needed. This process can minimize the number of simulations that must be performed by the analyst and the number of iterations needed before the design is finalized. The loads and constraints defined within the CAD environment can be transferred into the advanced simulation program, saving the analyst time in setting up the simulation and minimizing redundancy in the workflow. This is a single part model of a yoke in Autodesk Inventor. The inside surface of the small hole has been split into two halves so that the constraint can be confined to one half of the face. This operation was performed using the split command in the modify panel of the 3D model ribbon tab. We want to mimic the effects of a fixed pin running through the hole. Since the yoke will be loaded in tension, only the plus x half of the hole will bear against the pin. In addition, the partial cylinder at the large end of the slot has been split into two halves. This split provides an edge that lies in the global XZ plane, which is a plane of symmetry for this model. We'll discuss the reason for this edge in video part B. To set up an inventor simulation, go to the Environments tab of the ribbon and click Stress Analysis in the Begin panel. Then, Click Create Study in the Manage panel of the Analysis Ribbon tab that appears. The default study type is a static analysis, which is what we want to perform for this exercise. Notice the option Detect and Eliminate Rigid Body Modes. Activate this option. In a later step, we will be applying a pin constraint to half of the small hole, which will prevent radial and axial motion but will allow tangential motion along the constrained cylindrical face. This type of constraint will better simulate the behavior of an actual pin connection than a fixed constraint would. It will permit the yoke to deform under load and slide a small amount along the constrained surface. Therefore, the yoke is free to rotate about the center line of the small hole, and the model is not statically stable. The Detect and Eliminate Rigid Body Modes option will automatically apply low stiffness spring constraints to prevent this rigid body rotation without significantly affecting the stress results. Notice the items listed within the browser, which are similar to the items you would define within Simulation Mechanical. For example, you see the materials, constraints, loads, contacts, and mesh parameters. We'll start by defining the yoke material. Right-click Material and choose Assign Materials from the Context menu. Let's choose Stainless Steel 440C in the Override Material column. And click OK.
Next, we will add a constraint to the appropriate side of the small hole. Right-click Constraints in the browser and choose Pin Constraint. Expand the dialog that appears if it is not already expanded. Ensure that the Fix Radial Direction and Fix Axial Direction options are activated and the Fix Tangential Direction is not activated. Select the plus X half of the small hole's face and click OK. A pin constraint glyph appears on the face. Next, we will add a bearing load to the interface of the large hole. A bearing load automatically applies the specified force using a parabolic distribution that represents the typical load distribution at shaft and bearing interfaces. It also applies the force over a partial area of the cylindrical face with a maximum zone equal to 180 degrees of the cylinder. Therefore, there is no need to split the face to confine the force to the appropriate load zone. You can right-click loads in the browser and choose from the context menu or click the bearing load icon in the ribbon. Again, expand the dialog that appears if it's not already expanded. We need to specify the load direction, so activate the Use Vector Components option. Then type minus 1,000 pounds of force in the FX input field. This input produces a load of 1,000 pounds in the minus X direction, putting the yoke in tension. Select the face of the large hole. An aeroglyph appears on the model. Click OK. Note that you can edit loads, constraints, and materials after they are defined by double-clicking the entry in the browser. Next, let's specify a mesh size that is finer than the default size. Click the Mesh Settings icon in the ribbon. Change the average element size from 0.1 to 0.03. The average element size will be approximately 3% of the part's bounding box length rather than 10%. Click OK. We're ready to run the simulation. Click Simulate from the Analysis ribbon. Click Run in the Simulate dialog. We have our preliminary estimation of the part's behavior under load. The yoke has elongated along the x-axis direction as expected. Note the maximum von Mises stress of approximately 10.1 KSI and observe its location. Double-click displacement under results in the browser. Note the maximum displacement of 0.000796 inches. Perhaps you would now like to perform a more detailed stress analysis, or you might want to determine the fatigue life, for example. You will need to use a more advanced FEA package, such as Autodesk Simulation Mechanical, to do that. Exit the stress analysis environment and save your model to make sure the latest configuration is saved to your hard drive. This demonstration will continue in video part B, where we will look at the process of transferring this simulation model from inventor to simulation mechanical for further analysis.